Here's my example problem. Suppose you need to build a rectangular corral along a river, which basically means that we're going to need only three sides. We're going to be limited to a thousand feet of fencing, and we want to know the maximum area that the corral could have. Um, that's the basic idea of this problem. So let's take a look at how it can be solved. The whole idea of max-min problems is that I'm trying to maximize or minimize some value. Okay, a lot of times we'll have a certain amount of resources, we're trying to maximize an area using those resources, or a volume using those resources, or maybe we're trying to create something that minimizes a cost. Um, maybe I'm minimizing the supplies I use for something, minimizing the surface area for supplies to make something that has to be a required volume. Um, all kinds of different problems where you might have to find a maximum or minimum value. And obviously a, a pretty interesting and important application, especially for a company trying to maximize profits or minimize costs or those sorts of things. So we saw the example before. We have a river bank. You always want to start out these problems. Most of these are going to be pretty visual. So you always want to start out with the diagram. And you also want to set up some variables based on that diagram. So I have a river. And perhaps more importantly, I have a pen that only has three sides. Okay, So I'm going to call. Uh, and I could do this with one set of variables. Uh, I could do this with two variables. I'm actually going to go ahead and, and do this with two variables, although I know we've talked in class a couple times about doing this with only one. The final result should work out either way. Um, and what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to call these two sides x for no particular reason. Um, they're opposite sides of rectangles, so they should be the same. I'm going to call this other side y, okay? Um, just using two variables here. Number two, you're almost always going to have at least one equation that involves some type of constraints, okay? In this case, I'm only given a certain amount of fencing. I have a thousand feet of fence, okay? You should be able to write some kind of equation about those limitations using your variables that you set up in your diagram. So in this case, I know that the perimeter has to add up to be a thousand. That's going to be 2x plus y is equal to a thousand. A lot of times you're going to have no idea what that has to do with the problem at the time you set it up. But trust me, it has something to do with the problem. Just set it off to the side. We'll see you use for in a minute. One of the most important things, you're going to be asked to maximize or minimize something. You've got to write the function that is going to be maximized or minimized. A lot of times it's a parabola or some type of function that has a, a top value or a bottom value, a maximum or a minimum. We've got to see what that's coming from. So in this case, we're going to be maximizing area. Okay? We know that area is equal to length times width. Okay? In most of these problems, you're going to be tying this into some type of geometric formula or possibly some kind of function that you're given. Um, we want to write it in terms of the variables that we have in the diagram. That's why you set that picture up in the first place. So the length here we can say is x, and we can say the width is y, it really doesn't matter, uh, so area is equal to x times y. The problem here, I need to maximize or minimize that function, and you'll notice that at this point in time, it has two different variables in it, plus a, a third function variable. I need to get this written in terms of only one variable, okay? So the question is, how do I get rid of a variable? How do I replace it? Well, I've got this relationship from over here. Uh, I know, for example, that uh, I could solve for the y variable here by subtracting 2x from both sides, and I could find out that the y variable is equal to 1,000 minus 2x. So I'm going to take that, and I'm going to substitute it into this other equation. That's where the constraints very often get used. They very often get used to take a two-variable equation and write it in terms of one variable, which allows us to graph it and maybe do quadratic applications or that sort of thing. So the area in terms of x, I'm going to be replacing this with 1,000 minus 2x. It's going to be x times 1,000 minus 2x. Uh, area is equal to 1,000x minus 2x squared. Okay? What does this thing look like? Well, uh, basically what's going to end up happening here is this is an upside down parabola. Uh, you may need to know various things about it. You may have a graphing calculator. You may not. Um, the x-intercepts are pretty easy. 
The x-intercepts, of course, happen when y is equal to zero. So I know that zero is equal to 1,000x minus 2x squared. Uh, if I want to solve this, I could use the quadratic formula, but I notice that I can factor out uh, a negative 2x, and that's going to end up giving me, um, I'm going to flip the order of this, that's going to end up giving me x minus 500, okay? Uh, we have a product equal to zero. So either this equals zero, which would be x equals zero, or this part here equals zero, and that would be x is equal to 500. Okay, so I'm going to use that information to make a quick sketch. Um, I don't have a lot of space here, so I'm going to erase this. Uh, X-intercepts at 0 and 500. If you need to come back and look at this. So, quick look at this graph. Graph is crossing here at 0. It's crossing over here at 500. Notice that it's an upside-down parabola. So it's basically doing something kind of like this. And again, visually, crossing through at 500. Visually, we want to find the maximum area, okay? This is the length of x, that's that area value there. We want this maximum, okay? Easiest way to do that, that's a vertex. We know the x-coordinate of a vertex is negative b over 2a. Notice the graph in this case is symmetrical, so it crosses at 0 and it crosses at 500. You may be able to figure out that it's equal to 250, although it's not always going to cross at zero, and that may not always, if it's not symmetrical, you won't be able to do that. But in this case, that could work. But let's use the negative b over 2a. Uh, my a value here is going to be negative 2. My b value is the coefficient of x. That's going to be negative 1,000 divided by 2 times the a value. That would be negative 4. That's 250. Okay, so when x is 250, this graph is going to hit a maximum. Um, and so at this point, once you've got a variable, you should be able to go back up and put it into your original diagram. That's why that picture is so incredibly important because usually at the end of the problem, you've almost forgotten what your variables are. And that's why having neatly written equations is really important and why having a good diagram is so important. So this side is 250, that side is 250. Um, it tells us that our, this equation down here says our y value is 1,000 minus 2x. In other words, we had our 1,000 yards of fencing. We used 250 twice. Leaves us with a length of 500 for that other piece of fencing. Um, if I do need the maximum area versus the dimensions that would give me the maximum area, uh, of course, we know that uh, the 500 times 250 would give me that maximum area. Uh, that's 125,000 square feet, I believe, is the final maximum area. Okay, very interesting to note, common sense tells you that this would be a square, which would be the maximum area for the least perimeter if the shape had four sides. But because it's got three sides, interestingly, it's twice as long as it is high. And if you don't believe me, try some other dimensions in there with sides that add up to 100, and you'll find out that that really is the maximum. So pretty neat problem, pretty powerful. That's the kind of thing that I want you to be able to do in this chapter.